hey, yo. Me into Angela, what I call her, yeah. And it is a Wednesday. You know what that means, Jasmine Brand. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. What does that mean? Oh, I know what that means. Go ahead, Angela. It means it's a Wealth Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> and Pinky Cole is going to be joining us today for Wealth Wednesday, the founder of Slutty Vegan. Okay. She just opened a new location over the weekend in Manhattan, mm. in uh, in the village, in Soho. So that's a great you know, a, a space for her. Yeah, that's a good and I actually went, but I will say the day that it opened, it was pouring down raining. Sheesh. But I don't look at that as a bad sign. That could no, be that's a, good not a bad sign. sign. Yeah, I think that's also like a cleansing. Yeah. I was outside. I went too. So shout I, out. I love the rain to Pinky Cole. Um, so much happening mm. this past couple of days. So many different updates. So many different opinions. Yesterday, you guys called in and weighed in on what you think about Diddy. Yeah, I had strong opinions too, and everything that's happening with him. Um, we talked about. Yesterday, the bridge in Maryland. Yeah, Jasmine, you live in uh -huh. DC. You live in DC. I live in DC, but I went to school in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and so I went across that bridge a, a million times. Right. So um, <clears throat> again, like we've been doing every day with all this crazy energy out there right now, let's spread some love. Yes. And let's shine a light. 800 292 5150 is the number. Call us up and let us know who you want to shine a light on. And here's a classic. All right, Neo, so sick. We gon' light the block up. I'm gonna shine. I'm gonna shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. Yes. And it's time to shine a light. And today, as we're talking about the ba uh, Baltimore Francis Scott Key Bridge that collapsed after a cargo ship uh, collision just happened, we want to shine a light on everybody who is participating in the recovery efforts yes. right now. Rescue and recovery, yes. Right now, it's recovery oh, efforts. It yeah, yeah, Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. there are six people who are now presumed... Uh, dead because if they haven't been found at this point, right. it would be very, very unusual for them to, to be able to survive, unfortunately. Right. Um, also, the National Transportation Safety Board, who was leading the investigation, the governor, Wes Moore of Maryland. Mm -hmm. And the Baltimore mayor, Brandon Scott. Yes, yeah, so shout out to everybody who is doing whatever they can to assist mm -hmm. at this critical time. We want to shine a light on you. All right, now who do you guys want to shine a light on? 800-292-5150. Tony, who you want to shine a light on? I want to shine a light out on my woman. You know, she always there. She always supportive. Courtney, Monique Cannon. Courtney. Just thank you for always being there for me, staying down and staying loyal. Oh, he said her full government Courtney, name. Monique. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How long y'all been together? Been together five years. Nice. Okay, five years and still in love like y'all just met. Yes, ma'am. Now you're behaving yourself, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm good. loyal as well. All I right. give her the same thing she give me. Okay. No, that's right. All right. Okay. Reciprocated. Mm -hmm. We love it. All right, well, thank you for calling. Thank you. All right, well, that was Shine a Light, 800-292-5150. You can always leave a message just in case you couldn't make it through. And when we come back, we have your Yeti, and we got to start it off with Diddy. We'll tell you his response to the military-level force that have raided his homes. We'll tell you what he had to say. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, Simmons. Angela spilling that Yee Talk to him. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own hey. brand. And we're following all the details about what's happening with Diddy right now. So yes. we want to report all sides, all okay. right? Okay. So let's start off with the sale of Revolt TV. Diddy is no longer associated in any form or fashion. TMZ is saying they are completely under new ownership. Mm. Sources familiar are saying that he sold off all of his shares to an interested buyer for an undisclosed sum and that it's still black owned. Okay. All right. So he has been inactive with the network. He did step down as chairman last November. Right. And they said his last order of business was overlooking overseeing the sale now roland martin posted mm -hmm. breaking news the sale of revolt by diddy has not been completed more details need to be ironed out per multiple sources mm -hmm. these discussions have been going on for some time i've known about this for more than a month stay tuned so roland martin is saying it's not finalized it's yet. not finalized it looks like it's something in the works okay. but the ink isn't dry yet is this gonna affect a uh, carisha please because I still need Carisha, please. So <laughs> well, she does have a show coming to BET. Yep, we wrote that story, actually. It's a uh, reality show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's still happening. Okay. 
All right. Now, Diddy, in the meantime, has provided a statement to Hip Hop DX. His attorney provided Mm -hmm. a statement Mm -hmm. and said yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities despite media speculation. Neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. They also did say it's an unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence. And this is leading to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs. There's nothing more than a witch hunt going on right now Hmm. on meritless accusations made in civil law. Lawsuits. There's been no finding of criminal or civil liability. Did you see that footage of them uh, showing the inside of his house when they raided? Yeah, but they, they said the house was destroyed. Yeah, that's uh, how they do. When torn they, apart. Yeah, that's how they do. All right, now federal agents did, however, seize multiple electronic devices mm. when they raided Diddy's L.A. and Miami homes on Monday. Okay. Um, so we're gonna be looking at his text messages soon. Is that is that what you're saying? <laughs> you know, I but I'm gonna say this. Okay. I was thinking about it, and I was like, there's no way that. He didn't have things like permanently deleted. Did yeah. he definitely has the people around that can make that happen if there were things that he was concerned about? Especially, it's not like he just found out that they were looking into all this. So I'm yeah, sure. this has been going yeah, on. So it's not like it's a surprise. They okay. also did find guns at his LA and Miami properties during that federal search. Okay. Um, after they executed these warrants from Homeland Security. So they okay. said uh, three women and a man have been interviewed in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, and the solicitation and, dis- and distribution of illegal nar- narcotics and firearms. Hmm. So we don't know what they found, what yeah. firearms, or who they belong to. And what the, what the people said either. We don't know that yet. The, the three people they interviewed. And this is all really, um, it started with Cassie and then Lil yep. Rod, who's a producer, mm-hmm. is the person that has these lawsuits and he says he has video and audio evidence of Diddy. Now, his alleged, Diddy's alleged mule, Brendan Paul, was also arrested on Monday while uh, he, Diddy and his crew were stopped by federal law enforcement ages, agents. They said that he previously had a career as a college basketball player at Syracuse. Oh, Brendan. Now, Mace has also weighed in, and here's what Mace had to say. What's up, man? How you doing? Killer, I'm doing good, man. Reparations is getting closer and closer. <laughs> hmm. All right, now, um, Slim Thug has presented a different side. Okay. That's how I look at it, man. We losing another billionaire over allegations at this point. Still ain't no criminal charges. You know what I'm saying? We only got about one billionaire left. Who, Jay-Z? That's the only f***ing left. Look at who is wishing this dude fail. You know what I'm saying? He's his own people. Oh, no Slim. Now, some of the members of um, B5 have also commented. Okay. Oh, my gosh. And said, well, 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 for years I thought God deserted me. Now I realize he was really protecting me this whole time. Thank you, God. Okay. All right. So, yeah. And mm-hmm. we'll talk more about this because there's so much more happening. Yep. You know, Tyrese has weighed in. Mm-hmm. Um, acclaimed journalist Torre has told the story that he's never told before. Mm. And we'll get to that as well. Uh, 50 Cent, of course, has been weighing in. <laughs> but we'll do that in, in upcoming Yeetis. It's way up. And when we come back, we have About Last Night. It's way up. Yeah. Last night. So, About Last Night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. All right, it's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. Yes. And it's about last night time. And Jasmine and I both went out last night to different things because mm-hmm. we are trying to be out and about. So what did you do? Yeah, we're both trying to be more social. Um, I took my talents back down to D.C. and I went to this D.C. or nothing Women's History Month dinner. Okay. It was really cool. It was hosted by Angel. She owns the Spice Suite in DC, which is really big, and Tony mm-hmm. Lewis. And I met some okay, really Okay, I know yeah, Tony yeah, Lewis. Yeah, you know, yeah, Tony Lewis was there. And then it was at um, Bronze Restaurant, which is a black owned restaurant in DC. The food was amazing. It was about 40 black women that all kind of do different things that are entrepreneurs and leaders in, in, in their fields. And it was it was really cool. And Angel said she wanted to dispel this stereotype that black women can't get along and, and not make our are the dinner like transactional just like re- just just talk and just be just regular be cool. yeah just be cool not just be, be cool. asking for something you know what i mean 
All right. Well, <laughs> I like was cool. asking for things yesterday. Well, like, no, I'm kidding. Well, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> well, yesterday I went to Art Lead Her Presents. Um, this is something that Mashanda does. Okay. And, you know, she's very into art. She has her Art Lead Her organization. Mm -hmm. It was the Modern Women Wellness and Creativity, a conversation and dinner presented by Peloton. Ooh. Which was nice. They gave us all Peloton uh, yoga mats, too. Oh, by thought, the way. I thought you were going to say bikes. Which am amazing <laughs> yoga mats. Ooh. Not just, re like, really, really nice. Okay, I got um, to check, check your mat out. Yeah, so I got my yoga at, but um, it was a great conversation. You know, I am planning to start doing yoga on the rooftop yes. with my friends this summer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a plan that I have. So we actually had a conversation about that. So Perfect. hopefully this could be something Peloton gets involved with. Yeah. Um, but yes, that was at Casa Cipriani. And then I went Hold to... Hold on, how was the food? You know what? I didn't eat there because I had another dinner to go to. Okay, continue. So I sat down for a minute and shout out to my girl Ingrid from I Best Wines. Yay. She was there and she was also on the panel and mm -hmm. her wine was also present mm -hmm. at both of the events that I went to last night. Her wine is tasty too, by the I way. I Best Wines, y'all need to try it. It is, people are like, this is my favorite wine. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I went to was the one year anniversary for the black home, Nephi Walker. That is her Yay. store. Uh, she has a store in, in Newark Airport, but she also has a store in Brooklyn now okay. that she opened a year ago so okay. it was a one year anniversary for that and um, you know she's also helping with the interior she's an interior designer for my house and she's a black woman and she's an entrepreneur doing the damn thing right she's always as num num one of the top 10 um, designers for architect architectural digest wow that's major so make sure you follow her and the black home okay um, it was a nice empowering night though this was all about women like yeah. you and I both did a lot I know it's women's history month yep. but I really want to make sure things like this continue to happen and I always get inspired. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Like, it's there's so many things I want to do. It's super inspi inspiring. And then the funny is afterwards, we both called each other and talked about who we met, yeah, what, who, we, what did. we did, who yeah. we sat by, who we talked to. <laughs> it was great. Yep. So shout out to everybody who is doing the thing. You know, get together with your friends, yep. plan these dinners, plan these outings, introduce people to each other, and network, enjoy, each enjoy each other's company. Support each other's businesses. Yeah. Support each other mentally. It's so important. And, eat. and that is about last night. Break some bread. <laughs> Yes. And have some wine. <laughs> All right. When we come back, we have Tell Us a Secret. And tell us a secret. 800-292-5150. Mm. There might be some things you don't want to share at mm. these dinners, but you can call us up. And we're not going to judge you. And you remain anonymous. And tell us a secret. 800-292-5150. It's way up. Shh. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. What's up? It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. My girl Jasmine Brand is here. I'm here. And we tell each other secrets all the time. And now we want to hear yours. Yes. Be part of the circle. All right. 800-292-5150. <laughs> Hello, anonymous caller. What's your secret? Uh, I've actually been cheating on my wife for the last three years. Ooh, three years. That's a long time. Okay. Yeah. And and yeah, with one bad. other person or with feel, multiple people? You feel bad. It, it's, it's, been, it's been at least seven different women oh come on that's a lot so how do you cheat like how do you get away with it how are you able to have so much free time to move around well you see i actually own my own business so mm. i'm always on uh on my business on to <laughs> that's a good term you like that <laughs> uh, question do you think she has any idea that you cheat has she ever caught you or asked you anything well i'm one for seven i've only been caught once so do you do, what would you do if she cheated Leave. You bet. You, I will punch you in your face, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the nerve of you. It's no judgment, Jasmine. Oh, sorry. We're not punching people in the face. Right. Hey, I thought it was. I thought it was no judgment. You right. You right. Mm -hmm. You right. You right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you planning to stop cheating ever, or would you like things to continue like this? Honestly, I'm the type of dude that likes to have my cake and eat it. All right. So you want to keep this up? Do you use protection? Obviously, I'm not a. Okay. Oh, how dare I? Yeah. Do you do these women know that <laughs> the women that you cheat with do they know you're married? Only some of them. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, <laughs> all yeah. right. Well, thank you for sharing with us Good and luck. with all the women in the world. Yeah, I'm punching your face if I ever find out who you are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, anonymous caller. How are you? Hi. How you doing? Good. You want to tell us a secret? Uh yes. Um, I just want to say that um, Angela Yee is like my biggest crush. Ooh. Okay. What What is it about right, Angela right. that is so attra so appealing to you? She's other than sexy, like she, she like 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 her, her, her I don't know, like her skin tone, like her, her eyes and, and and her hair, like her hair. you know what I'm saying. She look good. Like I don't know how to explain it. Really, she's just sexy. She looks okay. All right. Well, that's hair. not a bad that's my, secret. That's my crush. 
Oh. That's my question here. Please don't tell nobody. Okay. I won't, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> thank you for calling. I appreciate it. What a great day for me. All right. No, All right. Thank you. You too. All right. Thank you. No judgment. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Tell Us a Secret. And when we come back, we have your Yeti. Oh, and let's talk about Marcus Jordan and Larsa Pippen. Mm. This has been a dragged out breakup, but we'll talk about it. It's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yeti. Come and get the tea. It's Way Up. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. I'm yes. not just any brand. I'm my own brand. All right. Now, let's talk about Larsa Pippen and Marcus Jordan. Larsa Pippen confirmed that they have broken up, and this time, it's for good. She mm. was on the episode of Amy and TJ podcast on iHeart, and here's what she said. I spent time away from him, and, and it just kind of gave me clarity when I was alone. And I think when you're alone, you kind of really either miss the person or realize maybe you're not my guy. And I feel like that made me realize that I don't think he's my guy. I just think we're just on a different journey, you know, and I feel like I have to be true to who I am, what I'm doing and what he's doing. You know, I want him to be happy. He's a great guy. She said they're still on good terms. So does that mean they don't have their separation anxiety podcast? That's why I just, I wrote down what's going to happen to their podcast. You wrote that? <laughs> yes. You wrote that question? Yes. yes. They had a whole podcast yeah. together. Well, Marcus Jordan also went on social media and said, I wasn't born last night. Mm. Okay. Rewriting history for clout is not cute. Mm. Funny how people change just to be part of a conversation that's irrelevant. Mm. Why give Shorty a heart when she'd rather have press? Oh, that's nerve. LOL. That's that nerve. LOL. Okay. All right. Ooh, so it feels like at some point, Marcus never really talks about And that's anything. your guy. Yeah, you, you guys are friends. So can you yeah, get the real team? I actually, I actually really like Marcus Jordan. I think he's super cool. Yeah. Like, we went, to, were you with me? No, oh, no. My girl Koya. Mm-hmm. We went to his opening hey, for his store in Orlando, but he's always been super chill, nice. That's why it was so weird for me to see him. So public. So publicly in the spotlight. Yeah. Like, we've never seen that before. I wonder, will he continue to date women in the in the public? Because I think Larsa would still date guys in the public. I wonder what Oh, she said would. she's ready to date soon. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm sure. Okay. Good for her. Sure. All right. Now, Halle Berry was uh, talking on a day of unreasonable conversation summit Mm -hmm. and she had a very candid conversation with Dr. Jill Biden first lady about menopause and about women's health and she said that she learned she was perimenopause because her doctor mistook her symptoms for herpes that's when the body starts to make its natural transition to menopause Mm -hmm. and that marks the end of a woman's reproductive years she said um, she felt like she had a razor blades in her vagina this is when she was 54 years old and she said I ran to my gynecologist and said oh my god what's happening it was terrible and he told her you have the worst case of herpes i've ever seen and she was like herpes i don't have herpes but she confronted her man about it at the time uh, van hunt and they both tested negative okay and then she realized that that is a symptom of perimenopause i feel like you have razor blades she said dryness is a symptom and her doctor had no knowledge and didn't prepare her and so that's why she wants to make sure she uses her platform to tell other people what that's all about okay all Mm -hmm. right well, that is your Yeetie. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. They're flying under the radar, but we still feel like you need to know about it. It's way up. I got news. Listen to news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. It's way up and it's time for Under the Radar. Dollar Tree is going to be raising its maximum price point for select items from $5 to $7. It already wasn't a dollar. So to go from 5 to 7 uh, this announcement follows a decision made last year to introduce 3 and $5 price points at more than 1,800 stores. They've been having a lot of issues, though. The company had closed approximately um, 1,000 stores under Family Dollar, and there was a penalty of over $40 million because of a rat infestation at one of its warehouses. And so I know there's been all kinds of issues with the dollar stores. All right, now let's talk about the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Oh, man, there are six workers who are presumed dead after that collapse, and the recovery mission has been ongoing. Recovery efforts did resume at the site early today, according to the state police. These divers were returning after challenging overnight conditions improved. They're still doing an investigation. And the president, Joe Biden, said he wants the federal government to pay to rebuild that bridge. Here's what he said. I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. We're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. 
All right. So, of course, our prayers do go out to the families who have been affected by this. The Port of Baltimore has been closed indefinitely. All vessel traffic into and out of the port are suspended until further notice. The facility is still open to trucks, though. And this is going to impact tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars of impact of cargo. Uh, the ships can't just offload anywhere else either, too, like Norf- Norfolk or Philadelphia. Uh, they said you need the facilities that are able to take them as well. And what we do know about that cargo ship that crashed into the bridge, it was scheduled to arrive April 22nd. It was flying under a Singapore flag. They said there were 22 crew members on board the ship and all crew members, including the two pilots, have been accounted for. But the exact cause of the incident is yet to be determined. So we will keep you updated on that. And that is your Under the Radar. Now, we do have the Way Up Mix coming at the top of the hour. Today is also a Wealth Wednesday. And Pinky Cole, who is the founder of Slutty Vegan, is going to be joining us today. She was in town for the opening of her 14th location of Slutty Vegan that is in Manhattan. But when you hear her journey about how she first started, Started off in this business. She had some horrible incidents that happened early on, but she was able to dust herself off and go even harder the second time around. We'll be talking to her. It's way up. Way up. Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. It's way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here. I'm not just any brand. I'm my own brand. And one album that I love right now is Sir. His album Heavy is out. Ooh. And he was going through a lot of different things that he wasn't really filling people in on. Okay. And he was on lip service. That episode actually came out yesterday. And mm-hmm. here he is talking about how bad things were. He ended up having to go to rehab, but he even bailed out on a meeting with Apple. We had a meeting at Apple, and I had a brand new car. And, uh, ah, man, I just was not in any position to show up to this meeting. And I called Moose and was like, hey, man, I'm sorry, bro, but I got a flat tire. I'm stuck on the side of the road, man. I can't. They're not going to be able to get to me for another hour. I'm not going to make it. He's like, uh, all right, you want me to reschedule? Like, okay, bye. Hung up the phone, turned my phone off, and, and just continued to mm-hmm. do some bullshit. I mean, Aww. that's really sabotaging you. But, you know, it's an addiction. Yeah, it is. And that is a sickness. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, he, he talks about a lot of things that he did, even during the pandemic, that affected his family so much because he is married. Yeah. And he talks about the importance of marriage and how his wife really held him down. Um, He was in and out of rehab. Here's what he had to say. During her pregnancy, I went to rehab. The first time was like three weeks. It went well. You know what I mean? I got out, got high immediately. Second time lasted six months. I did great. Did all the steps. You know, mm-hmm. got got past the worst of it. Relapse. Mm-hmm. This time I didn't go back to a normal rehab though. Me and Top kind of came up with a plan to like tuck me to the side and like take my phone, take my car, take my keys. Mm. Wow. wow! Shout out to Top Dog from yeah. TDE too, because Top Dog he said just knew. But mm. you can't help somebody that's not ready to help themselves. Yeah. Um, so it's a really powerful episode. So you guys can check that out on the iHeartRadio apps. We're on there for lip service. Okay. All right. Now, Portia is saying that she started to question everything about recent reports about her estranged husband, Simon's criminal history and questionable immigration. When all that stuff came out, that was is what led to her filing for divorce. Radar mm. Online got these court documents um, exclusively, and they said she asked a judge to shut down his plea for exclusive access to their Georgia mansion and reveal new details about their split. She had first argued the prenup they signed before the wedding stated he would vacate the marital residence within 30 days of a divorce being filed, and he refused. Um, now, he says that she brought two armed men. Remember, he was mm-hmm. discussing that to the home right. and he was forced to call the police. Well, now she has objected to Simon having exclusive access to the home. And uh, according to um, sources, they previously claimed Portia did not leave Simon due to the reports he was potentially facing being deported. But she did admit in these, this new paperwork that it played a big role. Wow. You know, so, yeah, okay. there's a lot going on with this divorce. So she so she found out when we found out. Yep, <laughs> definitely wow. did. Okay. All right, and shout out to SZA. She's reportedly starting her album from scratch, Lana, because of all of the leaks. She put out mm. a tweet and then deleted it. She said, we'll make this really simple. Y'all leaked three songs from the deluxe. At this point, y'all can keep the throwaways and leaks. I'll be starting Lana from scratch. Do not ask me about it again. Thank you. Mm. But she did say that she'll round up all the leaks that everybody got, and you can have those. Seems like a fair deal. Enjoy.
that has to be really frustrating. You're yeah. working on music. People are leaking the music that you're putting all this energy into, and now you have to do this. Yeah. All right. Well, that is um, your Yeetie. And speaking of SZA, mm -hmm. let's hear one of her smash hits. Here's Snooze. And when we come back, we have Ask Ye. 800-292-5150. Any question you have, we're here to help. Everybody Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should, so you should know. This is Ask Ye. Hey, what's up? It's Way Up with Angela Ye. I'm Angela Ye, and Jasmine Brand is here, mm -hmm. and it's time for Ask Ye. And we have Simone yes. on the line. What's up, Simone? Hi, my name's Simone. I'm 25, and I I often work in office environments, but I'm treated like a baby, and I want some advice on how to carry myself. Okay, so why are you treated like a baby when you say you need advice on how to carry yourself? What's happening? I, all, I just recently was called in the office for the third time, and it was a talk about professionalism. Hmm. I've been dress coded. It really just feels like old ladies bothering me, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to come at it in the, you know, in the most respectful and best way possible. All right, but let's um, talk about how you would assess yourself, and let's try to be objective about this. Do you feel like there is any truth to what it is that they're telling you? Or can you understand where, or do you think it's unfair? Um, I think there's a mixture, but I definitely do feel like there's truth, you know. So, like, what are some things they, they think? You said dress code? Yes, I could literally see a picture of dress. The dress was appropriate, but it just was a little form fitting. Okay, so. So, my director called me and told me to change. Okay, and then what are the other things they're saying? Just like, you've been away from your desk. What have you been doing? And when I'm away from my desk and I'm doing things work-related, I'm just a secretary, so I go pick up the, the boxes and the packages, and I go, you know, I'm like the liaison for the people, and I'll take them from here to there. Mm. So I'm not always going to be at my desk. Okay, got it. So I think what you need to do is let people know, because sometimes at work we assume people know what we're doing and what our responsibilities are, right. but those things need to be clear. It feels like you're doing things and maybe they're not aware of the other things you have going on. You guys need to have that conversation and it should be in writing. Like, I just want to make sure I'm doing what is expected of me right. and that we're discussing as I'm, you know, going and doing this and being a liaison here and getting these packages. Is that part of what I should be doing? Is there a specific specific time that you want to make sure I don't get up like just let me know what that is so that I can move forward and do my responsibilities and also I'll let you know what's being asked of me because maybe you're not aware of my daily routines yeah also it may seem a little time consuming but also you could like Angela say you could also track what you're doing that day so you can account for when you're away from your desk these are the tasks. I think that that's what I'll start doing, tracking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because that way if they ask something like, well, where were you at this time? Oh, well, first I was here. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go and do this. And this is, and, you know, to me, I don't know if you feel like they're picking on you because you did say that. I do. You, yeah. She said I do. You think <laughs> some of it is warranted. I, I feel like, and I, I understand where you're coming from because sometimes at work, you know, people do for whatever reason. You're, you're how old did you say, 25? Yes, ma'am, I'm 25. Yeah, sometimes people do that also because of your age. And yeah. they feel like they can, exactly. um, you know, talk to you anyway. And the only thing that you can do is combat that with doing your job, documenting that you're doing your job, and making sure people know. Because the worst thing to do yes. is assume that they know what you're doing. And so anything that they say, you should be able to have a response. If there's any issues, I'm a big fan of always sending out emails so that you have things in writing mm -hmm. so that if anybody ever tries to come for you, you can be like, well, you asked me this, and here's how I responded. And I'm going to keep it real. If things really aren't working, it might be time for you to start looking elsewhere because you should never feel like you're locked into something. If I don't have this job, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. If you feel like you're not going to be able to thrive in that environment while you're there, just start putting out some feelers and seeing what else you can be doing. Yeah, explore your options. Yes, ma'am. Well, okay. Thank you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I love y'all. Have a great day. Thank you. You too, sweetheart. All right. Well, that was Ask Ye 800 292 5150. And speaking of business mm -hmm. and work, it's a Wealth Wednesday. So Stacey Tisdale is here and Pinky Cole from Slutty Vegan. She is the founder and now she has 14 locations wow. she'll be joining us it's way up wealth wednesday had a dream of living wealthy and i don't mind sharing my wealth dog getting you straight financially mentally and physically this is wealth wednesday on way up with angela yee what's up it's way up with angela yee i'm angela yee on a wealth wednesday with my wealth wednesday partner stacy tisdale and i'm stacy tisdale about to start what i know is going to be my favorite wealth wednesdays <laughs> yet because we have 
Pinky Cole Hayes. Because uh, <laughs> I just got married. Pinky, Pinky Cole Hayes. Pinky Cole Hayes. Are we keeping White? Nicole too? Is it yeah, we hyphenated? Keep it Nicole. Okay. It's hyphenated. But I'm, I'm Pinky Cole Hayes. Um, I'm excited to be here. Where well, first of all, congratulations to you because you are in town opening location number 14 for Slutty Vegan. Yes. You know what's funny? This morning when I was coming here, I'm like, damn. 14 locations and I didn't lose my mind yet like mm-hmm. I didn't went through so many changes and here I am and I'm just so grateful that I've had the opportunity to build a brand such as Slutty Vegan that is really touching people everywhere like now this business is a household name and I can't believe I'm the person that created that I was um on a panel yesterday and mm-hmm. it was so funny because we were just talking about like different things that we have and I was like I'm just excited that like my coffee is the exclusive partner for Slutty mm-hmm. Vegan Breakfast and for me to be in a room with all these like super corporate people and to be able to say slutty vegan <laughs> and, yeah, and everybody nodding their head like yes slutty Isn't vegan that awesome? it's a it great looks, feeling it, yeah. it is a great feeling and I think what the brand has been able to do is show people that you can re-engineer words mm-hmm. right like the concept don't have nothing to do with sex mm-hmm. it really is a way to draw people in to have the conversation about veganism and we've been doing that for almost six years and it's been working and you also yeah. now are doing these incredible educational projects and different things in America American Sesh? Yes. American Sesh is the bomb. You will really be good for American Sesh. I'm I on! Tell it, yeah. Edge, you gotta come. I um, know. But American Sesh really is an opportunity to bring celebrities, creatives, creative executives together in the name of ideation, mm-hmm. right? So, like, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how much followers you got, all that matters is this, right? right? So, if we can come with collective collaboration on big ideas, then it's a win for everybody. So, we put these people at the table in front of an audience of 400 people and we just build. And I can't tell you everything that happens in the room. <laughs> <laughs> because the marketing is no marketing. So right. like you come, no phones, you just really come with a pen and pad and everybody like locks in and builds billion dollar idea. Pinky Cole, the owner, the founder of Slutty Vegan is here with me and Stacey Tisdale for Wealth Wednesday. But to even when you first came up with this idea, you had no idea that it was going to happen the way that it has for you. I still don't know what I'm doing though. <laughs> That's false. You Listen, do. no, I don't, right? So, and I think that... <laughs> For real, in real life. Um, I think that every entrepreneur can agree with that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're doing it right, that means that you don't know what you're doing because you're still learning, still trying to get better. And I say that, obviously, loosely, because I'm also a work in progress. I ain't never run no multi-million dollar company before. Right. Let alone two. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I get to learn every single day. And the information that I get to learn, I get to translate it and share it with other people who are walking in my footsteps trying to do the same thing, if not more than I'm doing. Yeah, How did you make peace with that feeling of feeling like you don't know what you're doing? I ain't at peace with it. (laughs) (laughs) To be honest, I feel like the moment that I get comfortable, then I ain't doing enough. And Mm -hmm. and getting comfortable is a cancer in Mm -hmm. business. And definitely. And and I literally have had the biggest lesson, even just recently. You know, I had three kids back to back. So as a result of that, um, I kind of like took my hands off my business for a little bit, Mm -hmm. right? And I I trusted people to run the business, which they did. But what I learned in business is that you always got to keep your hands on the wheel. So I don't know who needs to hear this. So when I talk about like learning and still don't know what I'm doing, like every day is a new challenge for me to learn something new about my business. Um, And I like it that way because I get to fall back in love with the business, which is a big thing for me. You always I heard you say that you always envisioned Slutty Vegan as a billion dollar brand and that that was important you thinking of it that way was really important to it success what did you mean by that the reason why I say that I'll tell you a story um so when I was a kid I'm like when I grow up I'm gonna make it I'm gonna be a millionaire I'm gonna be a star and like everybody around me would be like Pinky is crazy Pinky just dreams so big and when I got older I made my first million when I was 29 years old so everything that I said that I wanted to do as a kid it realized itself Mm -hmm. the tongue has so much power absolutely okay what it is that you think about what it is that you say will come to pass good bad or different so I always make sure that I put optimistic thoughts in my mind Pinky Cole is here she's got 14 slutty vegan locations now she's got bar vegan locations she's got books she's got American Sesh so many things going on and we have more with her when we come back on a Wealth Wednesday.
Had a dream of living wealthy. And I don't mind sharing my wealth, dog. Getting you straight financially, mentally, and physically. This is Wealth Wednesday on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. It's a Wealth Wednesday, so Stacey Tisdale is here, of course. And we are talking to my girl, Pinky Cole, the founder of Slutty Vegan. 14 locations now. And they just started rolling out breakfast. So you know what that means. Pinky actually spoke to me and we've done a collaboration. My coffee company, Coffee Uplifts People, is the exclusive coffee in Slutty Vegan for breakfast. So I don't drink coffee. I don't know anything about coffee, but obviously I did my research. Um, and I know Angie is a great businesswoman. Um, and I'm excited about it because this is just yet another opportunity to empower my sister, right? Um, listen, to empower another black woman. I was. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, it's an even exchange, right? Because let me tell you what you do for my brand. As I continue to grow, it shows that I'm also sharing the space with other black owned yeah. entrepreneurs and obviously you, you ain't need my push like you are a media maven right but for us to be able to collaborate and work together is just another example of what more entrepreneurs should do in their industry and I'm trying to make sure I super serve like if I could be there yes I'm there yes there. And I, I already go to the location and even and I'll be honest even if you would have been like this isn't gonna work I still would be going to slutty vegan yes. and you still be sitting that. right here like it isn't even just about that it just helps me. yes like, but I will say Angela every, is a one Wonderful, phenomenal partner. I can tell you I um, came as a guest on her show about eight years ago. Oh, wow. And somehow well, the Wealth Wednesdays brand was born. Just I, I always tell people, Angela thinks it's like bad luck to not be good to people. To Damn. People. No, She's honestly, a wonderful when partner. we started Wealth Wednesday, mm. we started this as something that I was like, let's give some free yeah. financial mm -hmm. you know, support to our community and advice. And we started it at my juice bar. When's your birthday? January 3rd. That literally is my mindset. I feel like God is always testing you when you come and, and are encountered with other people, right? Good, bad, or indifferent. And I feel like God gives you the test like all right are you gonna be good to this person are you gonna do right by this person are you gonna be fair to this person and if you aren't good to this person i feel like that's when the good karma does not come to you I agree. so like that's my philosophy that's, just, that's what literally it was in like everything from. that i do i feel like in turn i always continue to get blessed pinky cole the owner the founder of slutty vegan is here with me and stacy tisdale for wealth wednesday first of all i just also want to say we don't talk about bar vegan enough <laughs> and how amazing that restaurant thank you is. do you know bar vegan was really just i was sitting on my blue couch here we go. Okay, and I came up with Bar Vegan, and I'm like, oh, Bar Vegan, I want to create a restaurant <laughs> that's vegan. They got a bar and call it Bar Vegan. And I had no idea that I was creating another multi million dollar brand. And there's such a <laughs> difference between people who have an idea and then just be like, I oh, forget, it. I'm not going to do it. And people who have an idea and then say, well, let me figure out how can I make this happen. Yeah. You know, yeah, and that absolutely. I think is going to be the difference between people becoming successful and, and creating wealth mm -hmm. for the future generations and people who are just like, I could have did that. I should have did that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I want to give some advice to all the entrepreneurs listening to this because obviously, I'll be honest, it's easy for me to come up with an idea and execute, right? I have the means to do so. But what I had to do to get to this position is I had to get super laser focused focused on slutty vegan when I first created my company right tunnel vision I'm not thinking about nothing else I'm not doing nothing else I'm making sacrifices I ain't going out I'm not partying like I'm mm -hmm. making the main thing the main thing and when the main thing started to grow and scale and become a household name and a, a money revenue generating machine then I started to focus on other things like okay now I could use this money to continue to create more ideas but you have to make that thing that you have focus on it a lot of times people come to me like well I got these three ideas I want to do this and I want to I'm like no focus <laughs> on the first thing first and make that thing so great and as that thing becomes great that becomes your umbrella wealth Wednesdays <laughs> is sad Listen, you know, we are giving to come it. up here every weekend. Drop some, I know some gems for us, but like you said, I've been following your journey from the beginning, and so yeah. it is such a pleasure for me to be able to say you can get coffee up list people at Slutty Vegan yes, for can. breakfast now. Yes. But anyway, honestly, Pinky, thank you so much. No matter what, I always support you. But thank I'm just you. really excited about our partnership and working with you as a human being and as a person is an honor for me. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate and it. Shout out to both of you for what you're doing together. The example mm -hmm. that you're being in and me and you too Stacy. we yeah, do we're we're proud of you yes. too. I was just about to say this is you are now part of the Wealth Wednesdays family <laughs> and we have plans for you yes. and she will be in our entrepreneurs group which is free to all of you just sign up for Wealth Wednesdays for entrepreneurs and you have if you guys can feel the energy in this room right now these three black women are going to do a lot all right awesome. thank, thank you, you. Thank you. you can watch that full interview on my YouTube channel way up with ye and when we come back you guys have the last word pick up the phone Can't be 
Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Jasmine Brand is here. What's up, Angela? Hey, girl. We made it through another day. Don't you feel good whenever you're at work and you're like, we made it through another day at work? We did. I'm a little tired. I'm not going to lie. But shout out to Pinky Cole. She's so tired. There was a video she posted (laughs) where she was on a conference call in the car with her laptop out and fell asleep on the conference call and then her phone fell on the ground. Somebody happened to be filming her Mm -mm. as she fell asleep and she said she falls asleep during conference calls all the time. Time. She also is a mom of multiples. Yeah, she know, has so. three kids. Yeah, that's a lot of 14 kids. 14 stores now. Um, 14 locations for Slutty Vegan. But you can watch that full interview on Way Up With Ye. Okay. I've definitely fallen asleep during a Zoom I, uh, before. I, yeah, I have to. I have, definitely. That's so With the camera on? <sighs> yes. <laughs> okay. So embarrassing. Right. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, you guys... Take care of yourself. That's all I have to say. Get your rest, okay? And of course, you guys have the last word. So my husband cheated on me with my best friend, and he didn't know that I knew. So to get him back, I slept with his twin brother and his best friend. And here's the topper. Uh, Don't judge me. And his daddy. (laughs) I'd like to shine a light on everybody in Baltimore who's impacted by the bridge collapse. I hope they have a wonderful Easter, Ramadan, whatever they're celebrating in lieu of that. Thank you. Going way up up, with Angela Yee.